This is the ZK Power Hour. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're, we got uh, a, a wide variety of viewpoints here, so we're going to have uh, some good information. And uh, let me just tell you the agenda. We're, we're looking at doing this for about 45 minutes. We're going to do introductions, and then we're going to talk about the ZK landscape. We're going to have some project-specific questions. So there's uh, a few different projects here. You'll get that from the intro. And then each project Every person's going to talk about, you know, why it's an awesome project organization and why you should really be following everything that we're doing. Um, and then some closing thoughts and, and questions and answers. So I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, so everybody's background uh, for coming to this is, is different. So I'll give you a quick intro of myself and, and for, for the panelists here. For each of the things that uh, questions that that I've got for you, if you give like a two to three minute answer, and uh, and I'll cut you off if it goes too long. <laughs> All right. So I'm Rolf Versluis. I, I co-founded Horizon back, uh, known as Zen Cash, uh, with Rob here back in 2017. And uh, before that, I was an officer, an officer in the United States Navy, based out of Hawaii on a submarine. So we kind of came out here in the Pacific, but not the way we normally got here. Uh, worked for Cisco Systems. Uh, You're not allowed then, to talk about that, Rolf. Please. No, no, but it was during the Cold War and we won, so there you go. <laughs> uh, so founded an IT company, grew that, sold it to private equity and back in 2015. Then I had time to start doing Bitcoin mining, GPU mining, and really saw how uh, ZK was gonna, gonna take off. And, uh, oh, Steven, great, just uh, excellent. And uh, right now, I head up the business development team at Horizon Labs. And so, uh, Gemma, you've worked as an investment analyst, investor, and founder in both the finance and blockchain industry, and you're the co-founder of Singularity, so building a DeFi protocol with, with specific goals. But can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and Singularity? Sure. Great. Uh, so, hi, everyone. Uh, Gemma Shu. I'm one of the co-founders of Singularity. So... I got into crypto back in, I would say, 2017. In fact, it was a similar event like this um, in Sydney that, that um, got me hooked on uh, Ethereum and um, was actually like a very cult-like experience. Um, and that very night, I got my first, uh, uh, my Ether wallet and the rest is history. So I've been in this space, um, seventh year, um, mostly as an angel investor, uh, mainly doing a lot of so early stage uh, investments, a bit of degen in the secondary markets, didn't really go well, so sticking with private markets, and then, and then um, co-founded Singularity probably around 18 months ago, and, and really Singularity is a, I'm sure we'll go into it in a bit of detail uh, down the track, but it's a compliant uh, dark pool, right? So really focus on institutional trading, um, OTC, swaps, um, and a bunch of sort of on-chain, uh, uh, confidential, but compliant use cases. Um, yeah, so that's me. And uh, so coming from a TradFi background, I think, you know, luckily I left. Um, we want to go back again and uh, hopefully to be around for a lot longer. Nice. Thanks, Gemma. So, Stephen. You've you got experience in the VC industry at Galaxy Ventures, which is a leading investor in the space, uh, and currently you're head of strategy at, at Risk Zero. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and, and Risk Zero? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I work at Risk Zero as a head of strategy, and what we're really focused on is making ZK more accessible with our ZK VM, um, which I think is really like broken barriers and changed how people build with ZK, basically enabling people to verifiably do any sort of computation, um, and that computation is usually written in Rust. Um, and then over the past few months and years, we've released CKVM 1.0 and are working with a lot of teams in the industry, a lot of them focused around rollups, but also coprocessor-based architectures. And all of that is culminating um, very recently with the, la the launch of Boundless, or the soon-to-be-launch of Boundless, um, which is basically like an end-to-end vertically integrated ZK stack that allows any application to access um, verifiable computes. Uh, wonderful, thank you. Uh, so Matt, so you're working in the Bay Area and you went right into one of the hottest spaces of crypto. So building out rollups as a service and app chains at, at Caldera, uh, which you founded, uh, putting you squarely in the middle of the Ethereum scaling and modular uh, space. But can you tell, me, tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and, and Caldera? 
Yeah, so for myself personally, like I started my crypto journey back in like 2012, 2013. Uh, I was in middle school at the time, just looking to like speculate uh, on digital assets. I somehow stumbled upon like Mt. Gox and all the exchanges back then, which are have like many of which have now been like shut down by the U.S. government, like BTCE, etc. Um, so first crypto cycle, like put all my savings in a Bitcoin, which was like around like you know a couple hundred dollars at the time. Lost it all in Mt. Gox, and then you know ran that full cycle. Um, yeah, since then uh, have been fairly active as a developer in the Web3 space. Um, went to Stanford, studied computer science. Uh, my focus was uh, on like the intersection between sort of like distributed systems, some operating systems, and like some programming language theory, uh, and a little bit of cryptography, and like all those things kind of lead back uh, to blockchain. So that's how uh, myself and my co-founder got into modularity and building blockchains and building rollups. Um, we founded Caldera, which uh, since then has now become one of the leading uh, platforms that allows people to launch their own dedicated customs, uh, custom L2s and L3s on top of Ethereum. Uh, we work with a bunch of really great teams, including Manta, uh, ApeChain, see my, my friend there wearing the shirt, uh, uh, Kinto, uh, Sanko, and a whole bunch of other teams, now about 65, uh, all launching their own chains. Nice, thank you. Uh, and Rob, in addition to founding Horizon Labs, you've been in multiple industries and roles, including military, academia, Bitcoin, blockchain, crypto. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you're currently doing? Yeah, sure, guys. Uh, happy to be here. I Probably same uh, Bitcoin vintage as this guy over here, uh, but I didn't lose it on Mt. Gox. You know, you could kind of tell they were going under at the time, yeah, <laughs> but you're, <laughs> you're kind of speculative. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I got into Bitcoin more for, I guess we'll, we'll, uh, we'll call it the cultural reasons of Bitcoin back then. Um, and, and I'm still a huge believer that this is a cultural movement. Now, back then, guys, you, you couldn't find these types of events like Token 2049 and, and these other um, conferences. But you just had these small little communities. You had, everyone had their like, local Bitcoin dealer kind of thing. And uh, you know, that, that evolved into ultimately like a, a big uh, love for privacy for me personally, like where I wanted to go in the industry. So I, I went from basically being a scientist, in, uh, an Air Force scientist, physics and math, to then getting my PhD in social sciences, uh, kind of switching over from hard to social science, because I, I think these are all social systems. And what I, what I kind of feel like we're doing here is we're creating these like a online these online uh, economies, online societies, and it's cool to see them culminating. At Horizon Labs, we do a few important things. Uh, one thing that we're really excited that's like going live now, or working with the Arbitrum guys on Ape Chain. Uh, so that's a cool cultural project um, that we're seeing go to fruition. Uh, we're working on a couple of other really important things. One thing is ZK Verify. I see on someone's T-shirt randomly we have a ZK Verify logo, which is great. Um, that's all about I think a, a subset of the industry that's going to be increasingly I think really important, which is verifying cryptographic proofs at scale. Um, and then the other thing is kind of that old legacy project that's having a huge revival now, uh, Horizon, that I co-founded with Rolf, which is specifically looking at the application side of ZK uh, and bringing that to, to reality. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, no, that's great. So I got some general uh, ZK questions for all y'all, and uh, I'll ask one person first, but other people are welcome to join in. Because every one of you has a different perspective on the ZK space. So, Jemmy, you all are building a ZK application. Rob uh, talked about the building the, the ZK infrastructure. Matt, you're seeing the ZK rollups and, and, and the optimistic rollups. And of course, Stephen, you're seeing from uh, the ZK VM, which is enabling so many uh, more application developers to build on ZK. So uh, it's, ZK has become a hot topic this year. It feels like there's just a number of things that people have been working on that are call, coming together and, and they're, we're on a cusp of a number of different changes. Um, so Stephen, what do, you, do you agree in, with that we're right there where it, ZK is going to see major adoption and why do you think that might be? Yeah, I think it's like inevitable that ZK will solve a lot of the problems we're facing right now. Um, it introduces like scalability and verifiability primitives that like our industry has been lacking and will be a key component to scaling everything. But at the end of the day, there's like a lot of pieces missing. Um, just like with like how Caldera kind of changed how people approach rollups when it comes to ZK. Generally, the stack is quite complex. Uh, having everyday Ethereum developers utilize ZK tech is quite difficult. 
even when you start looking at rollups like Starkware or ZK Sync, there's still little things you need to play around with to build really useful apps on top of them. Um, and I think that's one of the things we're really focused on, but generally speaking, I think we're on the cusp of seeing a ZK revolution. We're not there yet. Uh, just three years ago, if you were to try to build anything ZK, you'd have to do a bunch of math and hire like five PhD cryptographers. Uh, these days, it's a little bit better, maybe just one or, or a few people that are native to Rust. But I think hopefully across the next year or two, we'll really see that gap narrow. Uh, like the DevX that we are trying to achieve is to make building on ZK reach the same parity as building on like Rust or Python, like the sort of CS that you did in college. Uh, and that's like a level of like DevX that even EVM and Solidity hasn't achieved. And that's what's really gonna bring ZK into the mainstream and really have us see like real use cases outside of DeFi primitives and NFTs. Oh, that leads me right into to my next question. Unless somebody else has something to add on the ZK landscape, because uh, you all have different perspectives. Um, so, uh, so some of the actual use cases, we see some of them in finance. We've seen them early on from uh, private transactions, and then there's uh, provable computing. But uh, Gemma, what do you see as some of the, the finance and, and uh, other types of real world use cases for ZK that, that are in development? Uh, sure. So, I mean, privacy transactions is nothing new, right? Like back in like this Monero, um, Zcash, um, you know, Zencash back in the day, and then, you know, Tornado Cash as, a, as an infra. But I think the, the idea um, about privacy on chain as a, they're still lacking a lot of infrastructure pieces, right? Because in the past, privacy transactions have been around using like privacy coins to transact anonymously, right? But where, you know, as the market gets more mature, I think what's required is privacy infrastructure to facilitate that um, uh, on-chain transactions in a, in a confidential manner. And, and the idea that, you know, when, when, when Tornado Cash was sanctioned back in 2022, the idea, I think the idea about like privacy is bad is actually quite, it's quite wrong, right? Because you can be, you can want, you would want pri a commercial confidentiality, but still be compliant, right? And that was sort of the genesis of Singularity, was to have, to provide uh, users who want to transact on chain with a level of um, uh, security, but security like knowing that your counterparties are legit, right? Through a gate of KYC process, which in itself is a, is a ZK um, uh, uh, provable process. So that you don't have to share who you are on chain as long as you're verified, right? Um, and then you, 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 the gateway opens up that you can then transact, trade, swap, you know, borrow, lend against counterparties who, are, who you know are not tainted. Jim, I'm going gonna, gonna to cut you off and give you a chance to shill a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thanks. That's all right. Uh, so let me ask Rob a question here. So what do you think's uh, changed in the ZK space this year and, and where's it going to lead? This year? Yeah. So like, I, I, uh, I think what Steven said is, is spot on, is we're, we're on the cusp of a ZK revolution. Uh, so actually our CTO did a whiteboarding session recently and uh, basically on that whiteboard, he had this calendar time frame, and he was plotting when some key ZK projects are going to market over the next like, six to 12 months. And it's pretty amazing when you look at it. So you have this culmination of mul multiple years of investment uh, everything from you know a variety of pieces of infrastructure to hardware accelerators to our new scripting languages L1s that are ZK based to you know you've got the RAS providers out there making it easy to actually deploy these systems. Uh, you've got amazing virtual machines out there that make writing applications and compiling them uh, into things that. Uh, who said it before where, you know, they, they used to take uh, a bunch of engineers a lot of months to write like a circuit. <laughs> You're starting from sometimes math to see if the cryptography lined up. You don't have to do that anymore. All right. So I, I think all of these things have changed. And maybe, you know, this isn't like a last year thing, but maybe over the next year, I think this kind of, uh, kind of acceleration in ZK is just going to happen. I agree with you, Rob. Um, no, it's, and it's good to see. So, Matt, I got a question for you. Uh, you, you get a different perspective in doing the roll-ups, and I know you, you all do optimistic roll-ups and uh, ZK roll-ups, and then you work with app chains to see. So from, from your perspective, what's changed here over the last year, and what do you see going forward is going to be different within the ZK space? Yeah, I think like on the roll-up side, 
This is on. Uh, yeah, on, on the roll-up side, um, I think we've seen like the last year or so has been like the real like zero to one moment, right? Like we, yeah, like there's still a ton of innovation that's going to happen with like general purpose of EMs. Um, there's a lot of folks working at things like at, at every layer of the stack, but like right now, like versus a year ago, we see the stacks work. They can submit proofs. You can verify proofs of the EVM or at least EVM-like things uh, on chain. And so, like, I think that's been a huge unlock for a lot of the folks we talk to because no one wants to be the first team to try something new. But now we're seeing like a lot of a lot of teams elect to build zk systems. We're seeing a lot of teams uh, look to potentially adapt, turn like optimistic rollups into zk rollups or implement zk proofs as part of their like fault proof strategy. Um, so we're just seeing like overall just like a ton of real adoption in ZK right now. Oh, that's really helpful. Thank you. All right. So we're going to ask some project specific questions. I got a couple questions for each of you and we'll, we'll go through here. So Gemma, I'll give you a chance to talk a little bit more about singularity, Not but, uh, <laughs> All right. So one of the things that as, as you know, you talk about dark pool trading and, and being able to do things, there's a balance between privacy and regulatory compliance. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and how you all address that? Sure. I can talk hours on this now. Um, the, the, the main thing I think is that, you know, um, it's not mutually exclusive, right, to be compliant and still want uh, privacy, right? You're like you're transacting you know, between bank accounts, right? But you're still compliant. Same thing on chain. So, so I think that's where, and, and the market is definitely going towards a space where it's becoming more regulated, right? There's permission pools now, like lit pools, that's permissioned. Um, but as long as, you know, and, and that's the power of, of zero knowledge proofs, right? Where you can prove that your wallet or the tokens of your wallet haven't been tainted without sharing who you are, right? Without sharing your, you or your entity details, right? And that's like the best of both worlds. And that's why, um, you know, our team of, of engineers, you know, in fact, you know, are all like ZK, by now are ZK experts. And then that goes to the point about, you know, they didn't start off as ZK experts, but through, because of the, the way um, the tech has evolved, you can pick up ZK cryptography quite quickly now. Um, and and so so really it's and and I think that's sort of where I mean the regulators probably haven't are uh, still probably you know a little bit behind on is he, like how re, how regulatory compliant zero knowledge proofs are when it comes to actually proving how legit you are but but I think that's where the market is going so so yeah so basically like having zk proofs allows the best of both worlds um, and hopefully one day it will be like it will be regula clearly regulatory compliant I think now we're still quite grey. It'd be nice to have some regulatory uh, clarity, that's for sure. And we see that in the United States especially. Um, so, Rob, a uh, question. Uh, so, Horizon is an OG project, at least I've been told that by people, which is pretty cool. Uh, launched as Zencash back in 2017. Uh, can, you, can you briefly describe how the project's evolved and, and the thinking around zero-knowledge uh, technology from how it, when it was started to the big upgrade that's uh, going on with Horizon 2? Sure, let's see if this works. Okay, guys, uh, Horizon's all about privacy. Uh, it, at least that was the original idea back when we launched in 17, which is kind of crazy from a ZK perspective. Um, it's just that what's changed is we have a lot better technology now, and, and that's why we're kind of relaunching the project. So it's been around and you know, it's got this community that's an OG community, um, and it's got a lot of infrastructure, markets infrastructure, and, and all that. But uh, we finally have the tech to realize the original visions. We were a little bit uh, probably overly ambitious back then, thinking about a world of rich and like privacy preserving applications. Like we were even thinking about things like, I don't know, like uh, decentralized VPNs and like a variety of other apps that uh, sounded nice to us at the time, but by no means with a UTXO based privacy coin could we do anything like that. Um, so anyway, we're, we're relaunching the project on top of ZK Verify. So you have this really nice synergy between the two pieces, uh, the two big projects that the company is working on. Um, and it, it just makes them way more efficient. And now I think we finally have the tooling to realize what I think is a, the next big step or one of the big steps for our industry is like, we got to have privacy. If more of our digital lives is going to go on chain or interact on chain in some way, 
you, you obviously need privacy, you do, right? And you know, whether it's red compliant or, or whatever, um, you, you just can't have your life out there for the entire world to see it, uh, especially when it comes to money and, and financial stuff. Uh, so I think now we have the ability to actually bring all of that stuff to fruition. Thanks, Rob. I oh, appreciate it. And uh, so Stephen, so what are some of the pros and cons of having the general execution ZKVMs, like the Risk Zero uh, ZKVM, rather than specific uh, domain-specific languages or, or specific circuits, in terms of performance and time trade-offs. Yeah, it's like pretty straightforward. Um, at this at this point, our ZKVM is like basically on par, if not falling behind, on very specific cryptographic operations in terms of performance when you compare us against like DSLs. Um, but like the key here. And what we really focus on is like because you can build applications in Rust on the ZKVM, there's actually an argument to be made that it's better than building in Solidity and in the EVM. Um, so actually trying to target developers that traditionally can't build really functional applications in the EVM and bridging those applications onto the Rust, onto Rust and the Risk Five VM is kind of what our whole pitch is with the ZKVM. Like, we're working with the team right now, and they're actually building an uh, order book fully in Rust uh, to be proven on the ZKVM. This order book is like more performance, has much faster finality uh, than anything you could reasonably build in SVM or EVM, even if you're looking at like Monad or Mega ETH, because there's still like high latency, as in like uh, second latency um, for some of those chains, and building in Rust is just so much nicer. You can build so much more. And that's kind of like the essence of the ZKVM. Outside of the part that like ZK is just a tool that lets us connect these Rust-based applications back on chain. Thanks, and yeah, I, I think as far as I know, Rust is much more straightforward to develop in. Uh, my son's learning it, he's in computer science and he's, he got the book on C and he's like, oh, I need to learn C so I can learn Rust and it's pretty straightforward crossover. And so um, running that in a guest uh, machine on the on the Rust Z, I mean on the Risk Zero ZKVM, uh, you can take code that's already been uh, gone through a security review, put it into the to the guest, and just run it, and it, it's a lot faster. I, I know there's still a lot of optimization that y'all are going to probably be doing in the future, but uh, that's good news for getting a lot more zk apps out there. So Matt, so what are some of the trends that you're seeing? on the front lines of layer two and layer three development. So what kind of customization are teams looking for right now and how in approaching the roll-up design to be competitive against other L2s and L3s? Yeah, one of the trends we're seeing, I mean, this is totally unrelated to ZK, but it's like uh, kind of like rehypothecation of the funds that are deposited into L2s. There's like a lot, there's a huge design space. I think Blast really opened that up um, in terms of like, you know, their native yield system. We have developed something like that, and I, you know, uh, that is very similar, that will be going live with ApeChain for Ape native yield, but there's just like a massive, massive space, um, like for basically using these tokens that are just kind of sitting in a smart contract on Ethereum. Obviously that opens up a lot of other questions around security and, you know, trust and uh, all these things, but I think folks should expect to see a lot more innovation there. Um, outside of that, like a lot of folks are experimenting with accounts Right, we, we all have this notion of like, you know, an account on Ethereum is like an address, like an EOA, and then we had, you know, smart contract wallets, et cetera. But when you're able to make changes at the chain level, you can do all sorts of things. So there's like a bunch of EIPs that are open for like more native account abstraction, hybrid smart contract EOA accounts, et cetera. And like, I think we're just gonna see a huge explosion in terms of people building new things with those primitives as well. Okay, thanks. That's really helpful. I, I remember when y'all were uh, working with Arbitrum to design ApeChain, one of the things that was most important was uh, very fast performance and being able to scale so that the chain didn't get overwhelmed when a, a popular new game happens or something like that. So it's neat that you can tune these different L2s and L3s for really the performance that the, the client wants. So Gemma, I've got a question. So a lot of people say ZK technology is pretty much just privacy, but we've seen other, other use cases. So how does Singularity preserve privacy, but in commercial confidentiality while maintaining regulatory compliance? I mean, we led into this a little earlier before, but if you could talk a little bit more about that, that would be great. 
Sure. So, you know, our, our core product, right, it's really the set of ZK circuits that's embedded in the smart contracts. And, and, and you know, in a, in a more layman's term, it's all the transactions that happen in our contract um, is, I guess, obfuscated by these circuits, right? So on chain, you can't, a swap happens, you'll be able to, you, you can't actually see the transaction, but you can see a swap has happened, but you don't know any details of, of that flow information. Um, the regulatory side is really about, uh, we don't actually do it ourselves, we have ZK oracles that, that, that we work with our partners um, that provides the KYB, KYC information. There's a KYB, KYC verification, but it's not linked to your off-chain ID, right? So just that the wallet is verified, but uh, it's not linked to your ID. Now, the, the follow-up question would be, okay, so a regulator comes in, you get subpoenaed, and then you ask, you're required to link you that PII. So that's where our Oracle partner, there are thresholds, there are multi-sig ways that effectively allow a regulatory authority um, to access to that PII information and link it to a wallet, but it has to be subject to a series of legal procedures and not just some random person can just rock up and say, I'm from the SEC and therefore give me that information, right? So there's that operational um, security or operational process uh, to ensure that that data is, you know, is, is available only under certain circumstances, right? And in order to be compliant, we have to have that. Um, to be able to, you know, because uh, otherwise then it's, it's not compliant enough. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So the regular trading protects against competitors, criminal organizations, but if there's some kind of subpoena or legal process, you have the ability and the tools to go through and, and uh, trace down to whoever's done the trades. Exactly, because 99% you know, of the, the privacy on chain requirement is actually commercial confidentiality, right? It's not because we want to hide away from regulators, it's because we don't want our alpha to be leaked to our competitors, to other traders, so we can be, that can then front run us. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, Rob, got a question for you. Uh, so, you talked about Horizon 2 before, but now I want to ask you a question about ZK Verify. So, what do you see as the main reason why projects might want to work with ZK Verify, and what's so important about ZK Proof Verification, anyway? Well, I think uh, it starts with what's so important about ZK. I, 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 I'm not from ZK Sync, guys, but I do think that the future is ZK. If you guys have seen that going around Twitter X, um, so like, like I start with the premise that um, provability, you know, the ability to prove that something has happened is absolutely fundamental to probably the future of our industry and then how our industry will intersect with Web two. Um, and I think that verification is one of those things. So you need to generate a proof, obviously, right? And need to have interesting things to prove, like financial transactions. But at the end of the day. It's the verification component that I think translates really well to a lot of things around the world. So um, starting with projects in ZK, so kind of our go-to-market for ZK Verify is, well, there's a, there's a bunch of projects in ZK already in Web3. Those are kind of easy sells for some of them. You know, there's a segmentation issue where some projects just have no need to use uh, a, a verifier like us. But for a lot of others, there's a really good reason, which is we can make it way cheaper and for you know, plenty of use cases way faster if you just have a, a layer that does nothing but verification. Um, so that's the first step, but that's kind of like the first phase. The bigger picture is uh, we think the, the industry, so like you have to, you know, to be an entrepreneur, you have to take a guess at the future. And one guess that we can take is we can see a, a world where you've got a few big L1s, you've got Bitcoin, it'll probably have an associated L2 ecosystem around it. You'll have Ethereum with a thousand L2s. Maybe you'll have, you know, obviously you'll still have like a Solana for fast, fast execution. Um, but beyond that, I think the world's going to go modular. I think unbundling services is absolutely foundational to technology's kind of roadmap, like tried and true for every piece of technology that's ever existed. And I think in our industry, we're going to see unbundling. And I think you're going to see rebundling with interesting things like what these guys are pioneering as well, um, where it'll be at a product level or application level. You'll think, what do I need to make my product successful? And you'll be thinking like a product entrepreneur and you'll you know, bring in services that matter for that project. This is the essence of modularity. And you'll be able to pick and choose. You'll be able to swap them out. You're not going to have any kind of platform risk because you can always change if you, if you have to, and you'll really be able to optimize. Um, so ZK Verify is one of these really important pieces for that sort of optimal 
uh, modular stack. I, I think that's the more interesting thing about what we're doing and its ultimate implications. Thanks, Rob. I got a follow-up question for you. Can you draw a distinction between ZK Verify and Horizon 2 and why somebody might want to use one or the other? Well, I, I mean, like Horizon 2, it, it's an EVM. It's an EVM for application developers, uh, and it's really optimized for that. So if you're, you're building an app uh, that you know, could benefit from an EVM uh, and its construction and the ecosystem around it, then Horizon 2 it, is a great place for you. But if you're just looking to do pure, raw, fast, bulk verification, that's ZK Verify. Now, the cool thing is they're actually linked together. Horizon 2 is launching on top of ZK Verify. Thanks, that helps a lot. So Stephen, I got a, I got a few questions for you here. And uh, so first one is, where does risk zero, I mean, you're doing strategy at risk zero, so I'm sure you spend all your time thinking about this, but where does risk zero see the future of ZK heading? Yeah, it's, it's really about like moving execution off chain, um, which is kind of controversial, but it's, you know, how do we really take advantage of ZK and the primitives it enables? Uh, so I think traditionally this is thought about as coprocessors, that's like a okay term. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but generally that's you know the goal we're going with. Like moving all execution, whether it's on Ethereum or Optimism or Solana, and moving that off chain, and then the only thing being kept on chain is proof verification. Uh, this is kind of the idea that Vitalik pushes with uh, enshrinements of ZK, and similarly, that's what we're very passionate about. Uh, like what the end goal here is like we think like, where are all the apps being built today? Uh, like, if you think about it, it's probably on your phone. That's like the biggest ecosystem that's exploded over the past two decades, like the App Store. Um, and connecting those apps back on chain or building similarly performance and functional apps is never, never gonna occur as long as we're like restricted to Solidity and EVM. Um, and we think like ZK bridging those gaps in the developer experience and also in the functionality side of things is like, our main goal with everything that we're doing. Thanks, yeah. Now, y'all just recently announced uh, Boundless as the verifiable compute layer. How would you explain that to somebody who's not familiar with zero-knowledge proofs? Yeah, it's very simple, right? Boundless is a way to easily do execution and computation. Um, you can do anything that you want in Rust, and then the results of that computation, you can verify and connect back to any chain. So whether you're an application on Ethereum or Solana or Arbitrum or Optimism, you can move your logic onto Boundless, do whatever computation you want, and then settle, you know, change your account balances, update state, do all of that on the base layer itself. Are there some specific use cases of that that uh, jump to mind for that's more popular or more interesting that you've seen? Yeah, there's a lot of varied ones, but the the names that probably catch people's attention is like we're working with the Eigenlayer team, for example, um, as part of their restaking protocol, which is very complex. There's a piece of it that would usually require 8 million gas, which is totally undoable on Ethereum. It's not even really feasible on Optimism or Arbitrum. So the only solution for them was basically to move the majority of that logic onto the ZKVM, do it on like boundless or any sort of compute layer and then return it back to Ethereum, which actually uh, completes how they're doing their partial withdrawal calculations. Okay, and so that back and forth, it sounds like it's a little bit different from just uh, a prover network. So is it, how, how is it different from yeah, a prover Yeah, it's, it's really just like completing that end-to-end -end integration. Um, for applications, the goal here is to build these sort of ZK coprocessor apps with two files, right? You have your traditional EVM Solidity file, that's where you update account balances, that's where you verify the proof. All the other logic is in Rust in a really straightforward guest program, which is what we call it. Um, everything else is linked up, you don't need to care about infrastructure, you don't need to care about proof aggregation. Um, for the developer, it's two files, one in uh, Solidity, one in Rust. Got it, okay, thank you. So Matt, I got a question for you. Um, been trying to go back and forth with your team, and for the past few months, y'all have been just heads down on building Ape Chain. So I know you've put a lot of work into that uh, and working with the Ape e e ecosystem. So what excites you the most about the work that Caldera has been doing with Ape Chain? Yeah, I, I guess I sort of front ran the answer to this question last time. Um, other things that I, I think we'll mention is like. It seems like the ApeChain uh, team and the community is really, really excited about trying new technologies. So we're going to see Arbitrum Stylus uh, probably integrated um, 
uh, with that, you know, when it's ready to go live. And so we're really excited to see like it as the example is like probably the first sort of like community chain that also has support for both EVM and Wasm. Um, I'm really excited for that, especially given a lot of the applications that will be native to ApeChain, like gaming, even like IP applications, et cetera. There's just like, it opens up like a ton of design space um, for building cool new things. Um, as well, I, I mean, I think like any sort of performant like compute environment is going to have like eventually really strong integrations like with ZK tooling. And so that's true for ApeChain, it's true for everything else, but we're just really, really excited to see um, how that all turns out. Um, I, I will say, heard really good things about uh, Risk Zero. I know the engineer who worked on that eigenlayer feature, and he said it was like a total lifesaver. Um, and so, like, like seriously, like you know, it, it sounds a little in the weeds, but like he like could not have done his job without you guys. Um, and so, I think just like seeing all these new primitives coming to life at around all the same time, like there's just going to be so much emergent behavior. And so, uh, just very, very excited for the next year, seeing all that come to fruition. Oh, that's, that's great to hear because you're right in the middle of it and it's good to get that perspective. So, Jim, I got a question for you. So, what's, what's next for Singularity? So, is there any alpha that you can share with us? Uh uh, sh uh, too many things. So I guess the, 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 the two main things is um, we actually launched uh, only a couple of months ago, right? So fairly, fairly new. Um, so on the, uh, we actually formed a liquidity network, right? Particularly around institutional funds to uh, effectively allow them to trade completely hidden um, uh, uh, dark pool transactions in our, um, uh, I would say, uh, hidden decks or, or dark pool, right? So that will, that feature will go live uh, towards the end of this year um, and we're building out at the same time that liquidity layer on top. Um, and then on the more um, tech front is we're actually going to integrate with, uh, uh, we're well, in the process of integrating with ZK Verify to actually reduce costs for our proofs, um, uh, particularly on main chain, right? So currently it is it does cost a fair bit uh, to do any transactions on, on mainnet. Um, ETH mainnet, uh, so hopefully once we've done the integration with CK Verify, um, that cost will, should come down significantly. Um, and, uh, and that's for, you know, for, for everyone to, to benefit. Oh, that's pretty exciting. Thank you. So Stephen, I got a question for you. I've been watching what Risk Zero has been doing with uh, deploying the contracts to all the various uh, L1s and L2s that are out there, uh, announcing the boundless with uh, all, all the different stack layers. And uh, as part of that boundless announcement, I saw that not only was there the you know, current version of the Risk Zero virtual machine, but there's a version two coming. So uh, I guess just an open-ended question for you. So is there anything upcoming for Risk Zero that you'd like to highlight? It seems like y'all got a lot going on, but within that, is there anything that, that you really want to highlight? Yeah, I think like V2 will be pretty exciting. It comes with like a whole sleuth of new features, accelerator support, um, better performance. That's pretty fun. Um, but really, it's like this boundless announcement and eventual launch probably either later this year or early next year. That's going to be really exciting for us. And generally, like the thing I just ask people to do is like think really deeply about this, these sort of like ZK coprocessor architectures. Think about how um, you might be able to build really innovative applications and use cases by moving this computation off chain. And this is totally Greenfield. Um, there are a handful of teams that are really starting to see what's possible now. And even for us, we're just waiting for developers to take this and, and, and run. So um, like, look into it. It's, it's, there's a lot of new and cool ideas floating around. They're just waiting to be executed on. Thanks. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what developers do with the new technology, because they do things that you might not have thought of, and it's pretty exciting. So Matt, I got a question for you. Uh, so Caldera has been doing so many different rollups and so many chains, and I noticed that you introduced meta layer recently, and so that's a, it's been described as a as a unifying layer of rollups on on Ethereum. But can you tell us what the end vision of meta layer is, and you know what happens when you've connected to so many different rollups? What what advantages does it give? Yeah. So I think one of the the bigger narratives that's kind of emerged in like the sort of like post modularity world is one of like fragmentation, right? A lot of people are really, really happy that Ethereum was able to basically achieve this like roll-up centric roadmap. You know, we've increased the, the scaling, the scalability of the ecosystem to like practically, people don't like it when I say infinite, but like let's say limitless, right, uh, potential. But then that introduces like a whole host of other problems, right? Like you now basically as a user on Ethereum, you need to have like 
25 to 30 to 50 different chains in your MetaMask. Um, and so we're, we're just trying to like help solve that problem. And so we're kind of coming at it, you know, we're an infrastructure company. We want to come at it more from the developer end. And one of the things, the, one of the pieces of feedback we hear from our chains and from our third party infrastructure providers is just how hard it is to develop applications and tooling that actually are like natively omni-chain, right? If I have like an Oracle and I want to push data to 30 different chains, what that usually means is like, 30 different environments in my cloud setup. And so that's basically the problem we're trying to solve, trying to provide uh, you know, a network that people can interface with that then they can use to interface with all the chains in our ecosystem and then eventually uh, you know, hopefully all the rollups that exist on Ethereum um, and develop really cool omni-chain applications and just kind of move state and data around more efficiently. Sounds like you're really seeing a need for that and you're taking the initiative to, to solve that problem. That's pretty cool. So Rob, uh, what are you most excited for about both ZK Verify and Horizon over the coming months and what should we be looking out for? Like I think going to mainnet, um, but before mainnet comes testnet, we, we've been on testnet for a few months, but what started recently was incentivized testnet. So actually I'm really excited to see how um, developments go with incentivized testnet in terms of user flows, in terms of applications and all that. Um, and, and I think actually seeing things go from planning to development to actually being out there in the wild uh, is, is gratifying. So, so that's where we are right now. Uh, almost in a way, both for ZK Verify and for Horizon 2 is actually uh, that test is launching in November. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's all the questions I had for you. I promised the audience that we'd be at about 45 minutes, which we are. So I'm not going to take any audience questions, but I do encourage you to uh, strike up conversations with all the, all the panelists here. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Appreciate it.